Let's consider the design of a proportional mode controller. For an example, where we have a buffer at a web server, where we want to maintain the buffer occupancy at R packets, and the time uh, at any time t, the occupancy is given by y of t. And the reference value r is given as a certain constant. And we want to choose the control input u so that the y is maintained despite the disturbance. OK, so how should we build such a controller? And we're going to use, in this case, proportional mode control. So first of all, uh, let's draw the uh, a long time, the reference value r. Let's say that we want to keep it at the five packets in the buffer. Then the signal is going to be the five t. So the, at all time t, the, it's a constant value five. And so r of s, which is going to be the Laplace transform of the con control that we want to have, is going to be basically five times the unit, uh, the Laplace transform of the unit function t, and that's just going to be five over s. So that's the Laplace transform of the reference input. Okay, so we want y of s to be equal to five over s as well. So we want y of s equals five, r s equals five over s, and uh, we will see actually what it will be. Okay, so first uh, let's look at the uh, way we compute uh, the uh, input value, control value u. So we know that u is given by uh, the uh, proportional mode value kp multiplied by the error term e. And so we know, and then the error is, of course, nothing more than the difference between the uh, actual value, uh, the command value r minus y. And I'm just doing all of this in time domain. So here is basically I'm saying u of t is kp times rt minus yt. And uh, for kp, we choose the value 1 over tau. Uh, and 1 over tau is essentially a time constant. And what we want to say is something like this. Intuitively, we're saying that let's say that's the value r. And in red, I'll draw the value y. So if there's some deviation from r at some point in time, then I want the uh, y to reach r approximately in time tau. So the shorter tau is, the sooner y will recover to become r again. And so that's the interpretation we're going to have. So on the y-axis, this is y, and that's time. And we want y to recover to r about time tau. And it will become very clear in a moment what that is. So in other words, u of t is going to be given by r minus y over tau. And uh, so remember that we are going to uh, we're, by, we're not taking the little bit of short circuit. We, we directly can write down y as given as 1 over s, which is this is going to be g, because that's the transfer function of the system over here, which we computed earlier as g of s equals 1 over s. So y is going to be g times uh, u minus w. And so it's going to be 1 over s. And u, we are going to compute as the Laplace transform of that. So in that case, we're going to have u of s is given by uh, r minus y over tau, where r and y are the Laplace transforms. And so u is, this is going to be 1 over s, r minus y over tau minus w, where w is the Laplace transform of the disturbance. So by rearranging the terms over here, we can find that uh, y is going to be given by uh, r over 1 plus s tau minus w tau over s times 1 plus s tau. So that is the form for y. That is the output, what the output is going to look like. OK, so let's see what this means in the time domain. So let's say that we want to keep five packets in the buffer. So we're going to keep rs is going to be 5 over s, as we showed over there. And so 
we are going to assume that the disturbance is equal to zero, just, and uh, we, we are going to just see what happens when we set r equals 5 over s. So y is going to be then 1 over, sorry, 5. It's going to be uh, 5 over s times 1 plus s tau. And uh, so y of t is the inverse, the plus transform of that. And that's going to be given by uh, 5 over s minus 5 over s plus 1 over tau. That's the partial fraction expansion. Uh, and it's going to be the inverse. I should be careful. This is y of s. I'm just, doing the, I'm just writing it out in the partial fraction expansion. And y of t is the inverse of that. And that will be given by 5 times 1 minus e to the minus t by tau. OK, so what does this mean? What do we interpret this as? So let's draw this over here. So this is time over here on the y-axis is y of t. And this is the value phi. That's where we want things to be. And if you draw this function and could draw, draw it in red, basically it's something like this. It says that at time 0, we are not at the desired value. And we're going to choose some command u. We don't know what u is. We haven't written that down over here. But u is, of course, going to be given by uh, r minus y over t. So u is going to be r minus y over t over tau. And so when you give this command input, which is the proportional input, uh, proportional controlled input, then the way that y is going to respond is going to start and it's going to exponentially rise to 5. And it will asymptotically converge to 5 at some point in time. There'll always be a non-zero error. And the time constant with which it rises is tau, which is this value over here. So it gets to approximately 2 thirds of its final value in one time constant and about 99%, I believe, in three time constants. Um, and so this is the way we control it. So if you make tau very small, then we're going to rise faster. And if you make tau larger, it's going to take longer. And that justifies the definition of tau as being the loop gain. And uh, the smaller the value of tau, the larger the loop gain, and the faster the decay of the transient response. So the transient response is the case. And then we are sort of in steady state in this region uh, after a few time constants have elapsed. OK, so this should hopefully give some idea of how proportional mode control allows us to control the value of the set point over here, which is the number of packets in the buffer, to be about five packets over here. Now, I'm making the assumption that u can be both positive and negative. Positive u means, of course, sending packets in. Negative u means I'm sort of taking packets out of the buffer. And this could be done in practice, for example, by sending a cancel command where from the client to the web server saying, OK, cancel my request. And then uh, we can see what happens with that. OK.